Good morning, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news of a huge tax swindle in Germany. But first in the US, Congress is being asked to increase their debt ceiling. It is unsure what they'll do. The limit stands at just under 20 trillion US dollars, a bit over 100% of their GDP. It actually reached the self-imposed limit in March, but creative accounting will keep the federal government functioning until mid-August sometime. But analysts are increasingly uncertain the limit will actually be raised, and that will create either a spending crunch or a reputation hit on US Treasuries. In Europe, international payment platform SWIFT reported a sharp drop in profit as a result of a large cybercrime event that resulted in fraud and losses that victimised the Bangladeshi Central Bank last year, probably by North Korea. Despite this, traffic increased on their network last year, hitting an all-time monthly peak of over 30 million messages. In Germany, a low-ranking official there in their tax office has stumbled on a huge tax swindle. It may be as much as 32 billion euros in taxes have been avoided by a group of bankers, lawyers and stockbrokers who have used the City of London as a tax haven to sanitise transactions to eliminate taxes payable on a large number of transactions. It could be Germany's largest tax fraud ever. We have been reporting on the grip of China tries to exert on its expats, including those in this part of the world. They are using money to exert influence on political parties as well now. They are extending that influence with lucrative news deals with the likes of Sky News, Fairfax and the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. By paying to play, the Chinese goal is to ensure that the Australian and Chinese media should adhere to principles of mutual respect and win-win cooperation. It is the same strategy Moscow uses in its RT channel on subscriber news platforms, but the Chinese are far more along with their strategy here. And it never pays to be a whistleblower in China. The state will come after you with both barrels, especially if you are challenge those at the top of their power structure, and especially if you are one of them. In this case, the accusations have been levelled at the HNA group and the way they wield influence and corruption in Beijing. Of course, HNA denies any wrongdoing. In Australia, it is a public holiday today, and that will accentuate the usual thin markets we often see on Mondays. In New York, US Treasury 10 year yield is a little higher at 2.20% today. The price of oil is marginally higher as well after last week's big falls with the US crude benchmark. Now it's now just under $46 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just under $48.50. The US red count is up yet again, and that activity is mirrored internationally. The price of gold will start the week much lower, now at $1,266 an ounce, a further $13 fall. The Kiwi dollar is holding its own at 72.1 US cents. On the crossroads, we're at 95.8 Aussie cents and 64.4 Euro cents. The TWI is now at 76.4. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.